Of course, it is likely enough, my friends, he said slowly. Likely enough that we are going to our doom. The last march of the Ents. Megalvanen, Yoisten here with your weekly Middle-Earth video. Today we'll be talking about the famous tree herders of Tolkien's Legendarium. Let's jump right into it. Before the first age of the world, Yavanna, the Lady Vala of nature and the earth, learned of her husband Aule the Smith's creation, the dwarves, and she feared for the trees of the world. Knowing that they would not have pity on them, and that the dwarves would be heedless of the things that grew upon the earth as they would be beneath it. Yavanna then appealed to Manwe for the forests to have a guardian of a sort, and thus through Manwe, Iru Iluvatar himself heard this plea, and he sent life within some of the trees. Life that could be awoken for the tree herders. The Ents were tall and to some degree humanoid, as they had hair of leaves, legs and arms of wood, with toe and finger-like branches. They were built so strong and powerful, and served to be another race that Melkor would mock, creating the trolls. Tolkien makes a clear point throughout his legendarium that darkness can't create, but it can only mock and destroy. Thus, in the First Age, after the sack of Doriath, Baron, the husband of Luthien and a force of green elves, scattered the assaulting dwarves into the forest after the siege, and the Ents who were within the forest assured that the dwarves would never go back to their homes. Thus, it was in Baron and Luthien's time when the first Anodrim, as they were called by the elves, were recorded in Middle-earth history, as they protected their forest of Doriath to a certain degree. Though these were the last Anodrim that did deeds in Beleriand, they weren't the last of the Ents to live on Arda, however. When the world of Middle-earth was young, and a large forest stretched from the northern bounds of Kelanathan to the northwest, from the Misty Mountains to the Great Sea, all of Eriador was covered in a large forest, and after the War of Wrath, when the elves journeyed eastwards into Middle-earth from the Sundered Beleriand, they awoke many of the trees within, and taught them how to speak in both Entish and the common tongue, and according to Treebeard they Quote, cured the Ents of their dumbness, end quote. There are four types of tree-like beings that we really see within the Legendarium. There are the Ents, the male tree herders of the forest. There are the Ent wives, who we'll talk about more in a little bit, who are female tree herders and gardeners of the forest. The Entings, who are young Ents who are just awoken from slumber, or those who are newly planted and grown. And the Huorns, who are more treeish than the Ents. I believe that the Huorns would speak in Entish at all times rather than ever speaking in common speech. And rather than having more of a humanoid appearance like the Ents, they were trees with long branches and many leaves, and some of them were black-hearted and rotten. Those lived in the shadows of the mountains, more inland of the forests, and they seemed to dislike and attack many creatures who came near them. Thus, the Ents watched over and guarded the forests of Middle-earth that encompassed much of the lands. And these beings were added to the old list of the free peoples that the elves had taught them. However, through the many wars between the elves and Sauron, and with the coming of Elendil and his sons of Numenor, much of the forest was decreased, and the elves who liked to talk to everything became sorrowful and war-hardened, and the Ents began to dwindle. The Ent wives, who liked to garden and control smaller plants like vegetables, moved away from the Ents their husbands, who tended to the bigger trees throughout the forests, and throughout the First and Second Age they moved further and further away. Many Entwives came over the Anduin, to the place that would be known as the Brownlands, and they taught the middlemen who dwelt near there about farming and agriculture. But the War of the Last Alliance came, and to slow down his enemies, Sauron burned that same area, and he created the Brownlands. The Entwives were most likely all killed in this time, but it is possible that some escaped, or that some even went east and were made into slaves to grow food for Sauron's armies or allies. Aragorn and Frodo speak about the Brownlands during the Fellowship of the Ring while they go down the Anduin on the elven canoes, and we begin to wonder what exactly happened in the Brownlands to make them so dead. All we know is that Sauron was the cause of it. The loss of the Entwives led to the end of the Entings, and as the Third Age moved on and the forests kept shrinking, many of the existing Ents were chopped down or went tree-ish and became Huorns or just trees in and of themselves, or even died of old age. 
These are the many sorrows that the Ents feel, and truly, these losses make them the saddest beings in Middle-earth, in my opinion. But moving on, I would say the first mention of Ents or any of their kindred was actually in the Shire in Fellowship of the Ring, when Halfast Gamgee claimed to have seen some kind of tree walking on the North Moors. And Ted Sandyman scoffed at these tales, calling them children's stories, but at the end of the day we find out who's exactly right. In The Fellowship of the Ring, the four hobbits, Frodo, Sam, Pippin, and Merry, encounter the Huorn named Old Man Willow in the old forest outside of Buckland, and they're nearly suffocated to death by him as he lures them into sleep. If not for the heroics of Sam Gamgee and Tom Bombadil, the hobbits would have surely lost to the old forest then, and the quest of the ring would have been made short indeed. Maybe I should make a what if Old Man Willow got the one ring theory. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see that. Months later, Pippin and Merry encounter Treebeard, or Fangorn, as he is also named, after they're escaped from Saruman's Uryx on the eaves of Fangorn in Rohan. This Ent, master of all the others and a friend to Gandalf, is called the eldest being in Middle-earth, so both he and Tom Bombadil seem to share that title. Treebeard brings them to one of his homes near the heart of the forest at Wellinghall, and he tells the hobbits about the Ents and their history. In their long conversations, Treebeard nearly forgets that the two hobbits aren't Entings, and small tree herders themselves. In the next few days, Treebeard calls a council to answer the threat of Saruman. This council takes a few days, and we learn of a few great Ents in different parts of the remaining Fangorn forest who watch over the different areas and sections. The most renowned Ents are Treebeard, Finglass, also known as Leaflock, who had leafy hair and used to walk in the winter and sleep in the summer, but had since become treeish and always sleepy, and Fladriff, or Skinbark, who used to live on the mountain slopes west of Isengard, but had been attacked with many other trees by orcs and since then had moved higher up among the birch trees of the mountains and had refused to come down. Treebeard was the only Ent of these three who came to the council, which makes sense because he was the one who called it, but many other Ents attended as well. Throughout the council, the Ents spoke in Entish, meaning their conversation was much slower, but most all stuck to the motto, don't be hasty. There was one Ent, however, who was hastier than the rest and had already cast his vote to attack Isengard, as many of his Rowan tree groves had already been burned and cut down. This Ent's name was Bregalad, in Sindarin Elvish, and Quickbeam in the common tongue, and he was younger than most Ents, and was about middle-aged for as far as Ent lives go during these events. Because he already knew what he wanted to do, he was tasked by Treebeard to look after Merry and Pippin for a few days. During this time, Quickbeam took the hobbits to his home near Durndingle, where the council was being held. After three days, the Ents decided to go to war with Isengard, and they called it the Last March of the Ents, as indeed it was to be their last battle, win or lose. Fifty or so Ents went to Isengard, while an army of Huorns followed the army of Urukai to Helm's Deep, where the trees blocked their escape from the battle and crushed them all. The Ents sang a marching song on their way to Isengard, and Treebeard remembers his wife Fembrithil, missing her and knowing that he would never see her again after these more than 3,000 years. On March 2nd, 3019 of the Third Age, the Ents surrounded Isengard and began to tear at the walls while Treebeard destroyed the gate. Many orcs were killed, and some Ents were even burned, and Beachbone was chief among them as he was scorched and killed, enraging the other Ents who attacked with greater fury. Eventually, Treebeard calmed the other Ents and had them break open the dam for the waters of the Misty Mountains to heal both them and the lands of Isengard. During the battle, Quickbeam was almost able to actually capture Saruman himself before the wizard completely hid himself within Orthanc, which the Ents deemed to be indestructible, otherwise they would have surely torn it down and made the wizard pay for his treachery. After the battle, the Ents stayed on guard, while the hobbits, who had taken down a few orcs with stones, ate their fill and found pipeweed from the Shire. Eventually, Grima Wormtongue came to Isengard, and Treebeard makes him swim to his master after coming to the realization that the man served the former White Wizard. During the Battle of Helm's Deep, Gandalf rode to Isengard to speak with Treebeard about securing Saruman within his tower, and after the battle, Gandalf led his friends and the Lord of the Mark through the forest of the Huorns, outside of Helm's Deep, towards Isengard. During the journey that night, 
the horns outside of the deep passed the group once again on their way to Isengard, and the Ents went back to Fangorn Forest. Treebeard was present for the conversation between Gandalf and Saruman, and afterwards Gandalf gave him watch over Saruman and Isengard, and the Ents promised to keep him there in Watchwood, as it was now called. But this watch was short-lived, as after Sauron and the Ring were destroyed, Treebeard believed that Saruman had no more harm that he may do, and he let him go, pitying him. Gandalf questions this, and Treebeard explains how he thought Saruman was a snake without fangs, but Gandalf says, quote, the snake had one tooth left, I think. End quote. Gandalf was right, as we see with the scurrying of the Shire, but in the end, the Ents went back to their forests after leaving Isengard for the men of Rohan and Gondor to clean up, and the Ents were never seen in recorded Middle-earth history again. Likely some became tree-ish and just grew to be trees, or died of old age, or even became horns. They retreated into Fangorn, watching silently, and though Gimli and Legolas might not have seen them during their visit, it is likely that the Ents saw them. The Ents are a grand part of Tolkien's works, and are definitely inspired by Tolkien's love for trees. He claims in one of his letters to always take the side of trees, which is in contrast to how Treebeard says that no one is on his side, and that none care for the trees anymore. The stories of the Ents are also inspired by the great Burnham Wood in Macbeth. In my opinion, we can learn a lot from the Ents. We must be kind to nature, and learn to love and protect it, or nature will retaliate in other ways, but if we treat it with respect, that should never come to pass. Thank you all for watching. For my part, I really enjoy the Ents, and I've always loved nature for all of my life. I would say that the race of the Enodrim is one of the saddest parts of the Legendarium, as they always tried to just live peaceful lives in their forests and protect nature, but lose so much though they ask for so little. It really gives you a new appreciation for the forests and the idea of the natural guardians, both in Middle-earth and in real life. I want to thank so many of you for requesting this video and so many others that'll come in the future. To get more involved in this channel and all things Middle-earth, join us on Facebook through the link in the description below. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to stay up to date with other Middle-earth topics, and let me know what you would like to see next in the comments below. Also, let me know what you think about the Ents of Tolkien's works, and share this video with a friend who you think might enjoy it. Namarie, and thank you for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.